Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Solving Inequalities. Now the stuff that we're going to explore in question 1 here is just a recap from GCC, but it'll be good to go over it again. And then the stuff we see in questions uh, 2, 3 and 4 are kind of stuff that you probably wouldn't have encountered if you haven't studied A-level yet or equivalent Key Stage 5 qualification. So there's two different types of inequality that you need to be able to deal with in the main A-level. Uh, linear inequalities like this, and then we've got quadratic inequalities like this, where we've got a quadratic expression. And you also have to be able to combine two inequalities as well, and we'll look how we can do that. So let's crack on with 1A. We want to solve this linear inequality, and it's called linear because you've only got sort of x terms and constant terms, there's no x squared terms or anything more complicated like that. So the way we do it, we're just going to expand everything out and try and get everything on one side, just like we were solving an equation. So the same kind of rules apply. So we can expand this out, 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times 1 is plus 3, it's greater than 5 minus 2x. Now let's try and get all the x's on the side with more x's. Well, there's more x's here than here. So we want to get rid of that minus 2x. We're going to add 2x to each side. So that becomes 8x. And at the same time, I want to get rid of that plus 3. So I minus 3 from both sides, and that becomes 2. So I've now got all the x's on one side and the non-x's on the other side. Then let's just divide by 8, and that becomes x is greater than 2 over 8, or a quarter. Let's quickly reflect on what an inequality actually means. With some equations, if I had, say, 2x plus 1 equals 5, then clearly there's only one solution to this equation. That clearly gives us x is 2. For other equations, we might have uh, multiple solutions. So we could have x squared equals 4, for example, and that would lead to two solutions, x is 2 or minus 2, or plus or minus 2 we could write it as. But with an inequality, if we had, say, x is greater than 1, that means that x can be any value greater than 1. Now let's do uh, 1b now. We want to solve this quadratic inequality here. So the way we do this is we make sure that 0 is on one side first, as we have, and then we factorise this. So, if we factorise this quickly, now you could split the middle term or whatever technique you used to factorise these quadratics, but I'm just going to do it um, by inspection. So that's going to be 2x and x, because that multiplies to give 2x squared. Now to get the plus 3, it has to be these numbers multiplied together. So it can either be 3 and 1, or minus 3 and minus 1. Um, so I'm going to guess it is minus 3 here, because that gives you minus 6x, and then minus 1 here, because that gives you minus x. So that's the correct factorization. Now from here, there's two possible techniques we're going to use. I'm just going to explore one, and that's to sketch this here. So if we sketch y equals 2x minus 1, x minus 3, now it has two roots, and I'm not going to explore how to sketch quadratics here, I cover that in another video, but the two roots, or the x-intercepts, will be half and 3. And that means a sketch will look like this. And we don't care about the y-intercept in this case because it won't help us solve this quadratic inequality. So if y is equal to this, we're looking where y is greater than 0. Now, on what parts of this line is the y value greater than 0? Well, if I highlight it, this part of the line, the y is greater than 0. And this part of the line, the y value is greater than 0. And that means if we look at the x for each of these regions here, we can see that the x value is less than half in this region here or the x value is greater than 3. We can see at any point on this line here, the x value is going to be greater than 3. And by the way, this has to be consistent with that. So if that's strictly greater than 0, then that has to be strictly less than or strictly greater than. If that was greater or equal to, then we'd have less or equal to half and greater or equal to 3 here. And notice that the word or is important here. Now it actually says here we want to give our solution using set notation. Now to represent the set of all real numbers such that your number has to be less than half, what you can do is this. So we want all numbers x such that, and that colon there means such that, x is less than half. So basically with this kind of set notation here, the left hand side is some expression you want, in this case just x, and the right of this colon here is any conditions that must hold of x. Now, for example, if I wanted all odd integers, I could write it like this. Now, we know we can represent all odd numbers in the form 2n plus 1. So if we had 2n plus 1 here, all expressions 2n plus 1, such that n is an integer. So using this notation here, and this z here with an extra line there means the set of all integers. So we want all expressions of the form 2n plus 1 such that n is any integer. But that's not relevant to this problem. Now, we also want the set of numbers such that 
x where x is greater than 3. Now we want to combine these two sets together. So we want these or we want these. So we actually want the union of the two sets. And you may want to explore my video on Venn diagrams. And the union of two sets is using this u here. Now equivalently, if I was to write uh, the opposite, so if I had 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 is less than 0, and we again factorised and we sketched it, we now want where the y value, because this is we sketch y equals this, the y value is less than 0. We can see the y value is less than 0 in this part of the graph. So then we would write the solution as x is between half and 3, like that. So whenever we have this between e one like this, we always write x between these two values. Whereas this, you can see the form is quite different. And the way you could write that using set notation is, uh, well, to be honest, you could just write as a single set. So all x such that x is between half and 3. And it would be absolutely fine to write it like that. I suppose you could write it as two separate sets. So you could have all x such that x is greater than half. And then we've also got the set all x such that x is less than, sorry, that should have been 3 there. And all x such that x is less than 3. And then we actually want the intersection of the two, because we want all numbers such that x is greater than half and x is less than 3. That's the intersection of the two sets. But we wouldn't actually write that. We would just write this here. Now, part C here wants us to combine these together. Hence, find the set of values such that this is true, what we solved in part A, and this is true as well, what we solved in part B, which is here. So, we've got this here, which we have to combine with this here. Now, you might be able to do it just sort of by inspection. So, we want all numbers that are greater than a quarter and is either less than half or greater than three. But I think the easiest way is to just draw a number line. So we've got, uh, let's put our key values on this number line. We've got a quarter, which is below a half, which is below three. And then let's represent each of these as number lines. So x is greater than a quarter. Well, we put an open circle on a quarter because we don't want to include the quarter because it's strictly greater than a quarter, doesn't include a quarter. And we have an arrow up. And then this second one, x is less than half. So x is less than half, like that, or x is greater than 3. So on the same line, because it's past the same inequality, x is greater than 3. Now what I do is then I sort of scan my finger across, and my finger has to be on both of these lines. So at the moment, it's only on the bottom line. And at this point here, it's still not on both lines because it doesn't include that value. But you can see thereafter, we're actually on both lines until we get to here. So we can see between these two values of a quarter and a half, we are on both lines. So x could be between a quarter and a half. Or you can see, actually, after this point here, we're on both lines. So we could say that x is greater than 3. And that successfully combined the two inequalities. Now, this problem here was sort of snuck into one of the uh, new A-level textbooks. Um, and it's this. We've got to solve 1 over x is greater than 3. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can either do this using a sketch, or you can do this by a little trick that we're going to see in a second. So let's do it via sketch first. What we could do is we could sketch y equals 1 over x. And if you know how to sketch your curved graphs, you should know it looks like this. And we also want to sketch y equals 3. So we're going to sketch y equals 3 here. And that is y equals 1 over x. Now, if we had 1 over x is equal to 3, then we know that point of intersection would be the solution to the two equations. But this is an inequality. So we're looking where the y value of the 1 over x graph is greater than the y value of the y equals 3 graph. So let's look. Where is the y value of the 1 over x graph, this one here, greater than 3? Well, we can see it's greater than 3 in this region only. Because every other part of the graph, look, the 1 over x is less than 3 here, and it's obviously negative here, so it's definitely less than 3 here as well. So it's just this here. And it doesn't include that value because 1 over x will be equal to 3 at that particular point here. Now, what is that x value? Well, if we've got that 1 over x is equal to 3, then that means that x is equal to a third. So we've got a third here, and we can see 
that the x value has to be positive. So we can see it can't be zero itself because this is an asymptote, it's tending towards the y-axis. But we can see that x has to be somewhere between zero and a third. It doesn't include a third because this is not actually equal to three. So that's a bit of a strange one that I saw in the textbook that could come up in the exam because it is actually in the spec now for the new A-level. What about this one? So, x squared plus kx plus 3 equals 0, where k is a constant, has no real roots. Find the set of possible values of k. Now, we explored the idea of the discriminant before, and if you don't know what the discriminant is of a quadratic, then I suggest you look at that video first or study that elsewhere. Now, a discriminant allows us to determine the number solutions of a quadratic equation. And here it says there are no real roots. And do you remember, when that's the case, the discriminant of the quadratic, which we'll look at in a second, is less than zero if there's no real roots. Now, let's look at this equation. What's the a, b, and c? Well, the a is 1, because it's 1x squared. The b is k, because it's kx. And the c is 3. And then we just plug that into this inequality here. So we've got b squared, which is k squared, minus 4 times 1 times 3. So 4 times 1 times 3 is minus 12 is less than 0. Now, I know this doesn't sort of factorise, but we can sort of force it to factorise, even though we won't end up with integers, uh, because this looks a bit like the difference of two squares. So we could write this as k plus root 12, k minus root 12 is less than 0. And then the usual thing, we sketch this, so where this is k now rather than x, because this is a quadratic in terms of k instead. And we're going to sketch it, so we've got the roots of minus root 12 and plus root 12, and it looks like this. And we're wondering whether y value, the k squared minus 12, this thing here, is less than 0. So we can see the y value is less than 0 in between these two values here. So that means that k is between minus root 12 and positive root 12. And there we go. So if k was anywhere between minus root 12 and root 12, then this original quadratic equation here would have no solutions for x. Some people find it quite confusing that we've got solutions for k here, but when we're reasoning about when we have no solutions here. But basically, we found solutions of k, there's values of k that we could have, such that this original equation wouldn't have any solutions for x. So we're dealing with two different variables here. We're dealing with k here, and we're dealing with x solutions to this original equation here. So if k is any of these values, then this will have no solutions for x. And then finally, for sketch the region which satisfies these two inequalities. This is new to the new A-level syllabus, if you're doing A-level. So we know how to sketch uh, equalities like this. So y equals x squared minus 4x. Let's actually sketch those first. Now that factorises to x brackets x minus 4. So that means the two roots of this quadratic will be 0 and 4, as we explored in another video. And it's a positive quadratic because it's a positive coefficient in front of the x squared. It's 1x squared. So it looks like this. Now this is actually an inequality. So you might remember from GCC that we get some kind of uh, region. So we're either going to be this side of the line or we're going to be this side of the line here. And the easiest way to determine is to just look whether y is on the greater side of the inequality or the smaller side. Now we can see that y is on the bigger side of the inequality because y is greater than x squared minus 4x. So if y is on the bigger side, that means we're above the line. If y was on the smaller side, that means we're below the line. So I'm going to put a little arrow to say that we're above the line because y is on the bigger side. And now we need the second equation. So if we drew x plus y is equal to 4, then the quick way is to try a few values of x or y. So if x was 0, then y would be 4, because 0 plus 4 is 4, so 0, 4. And if uh, y was 0, then x would have to be 4. 4 plus 0 is 4, so go through there. And that means that we've got a line like this. And again, we use the same trick. If this was actually greater than 4, is y on the bigger side of this inequality or the smaller side? Well, y is on the bigger side, so that means we're going to be above the line again. Now, if we combine the two, if I make these join up, we're above this line and we're above this line, it means we must be in this region here. Usually, it's the region bound between the two lines, but on the odd occasion, it might not be. 